1993, the University for Development Studies was established with only one faculty and 40 pioneering students, representative of every region from across the country. The present School of Hygiene in Tamale was gracious enough to give 40 bed places to the pioneering students. Lectures took place at the Islamic Secondary School for Science. In 1994, the Faculty of Agriculture was relocated to the Nyangpala campus and the new faculty, the Faculty of Integrated Development Studies, also started at the School of Hygiene and the Islamic Secondary School for Science. One person who helped us very greatly is uh, Dr. Abubakar Alassan. He is currently the chief of Gushe, a village near Tamale. He graciously donated to us the facilities of the Islamic Secondary School for Science. And Dr. Abubakar Alassan agreed that the university could use the premises of the new secondary school for lectures. And we're happy also that the Ministry of um, Health donated part of the School of Hygiene block to the university and that was where we housed the 40 students who later became 39 students. A year later, the Faculty of Integrated Development Studies was relocated to Navrongo. It is important to mention that the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research offered its newly built soil research laboratory in Tamale for use as the central administration of the university. Beneath a tree at the Northern Regional Coordinating Council was where the Vice-Chancellor and the Registrar sat to map out administrative processes seeking a giant leap to start academic work at Nyangpala. This was the beginning of daunting hurdles that came the way of lecturers, administrators and students alike. These were hurdles that would make even the tough abandoned ship, but not this breed of pioneers of the University for Development Studies. Hardships, it would seem, were cut out for this infant of a tertiary institution. So, how did it all start? Our first batch of students in the Faculty of Agriculture, every region in this country was represented. I'm shocked. Now, this was not deliberate, but they came for interview and we selected just based on merit every region and of course at that time many people elsewhere in the south of the country did not think the university was worth a sort it wasn't even a, a good secondary school but when i got the figures and analyzed them every region was represented and this shows and perhaps I have said this several times, Ghanaians will go anywhere for higher education. The idea of a university to be established in northern Ghana has been entertained by many governments even before independence. The late Dr. Ansa Koy raised the issue of a university in the north in 1953 in the then Gold Coast Legislative Assembly. The late Alhaji Mumuni Baumia from 1962 also championed the course for a university in the north. Several other protagonists for a university in the north joined the crusade. They include the foundation vice-chancellor Raymond Bagro Benning, Professor Songsori, Professor George Bene, and Mr. G. F. Daniel, among several others. However, it was not until the leadership of former President Jerry John Rawlings of the then PNDC administration that this idea would actually be put to the test. Former President Rawlings will later donate his personal prize money of 50,000 US dollars for the purchase of books to stock the library of the University for Development Studies. A committee under the chairmanship of the then Secretary of Education, Mr. K.B. Asante, prepared the blueprint for the university. This committee formed an executive task force chaired by Brigadier Dr. G.K. Day was mandated to ensure that the mandate of the university was executed. Brigadier Day was subsequently appointed first chair of the UDS Governing Council. The political will was there, and no obstacle, no matter how big, was enough to stop the tide. They were guided by a clearly spelt out mission and vision as follows. Vision. The university is envisaged to be a home of world-class pro-poor scholarship. 
This is reflected in its motto, Knowledge for Service, as well as its methodology of teaching, research and outreach programs. Mission The UDS seeks to achieve its vision by 1. Promoting equitable and socio-economic transformation of communities through practically oriented, community-based, problem-solving, gender-sensitive and interactive research, teaching, learning and outreach activities. 2. Providing higher education to persons suitably qualified for and capable of benefiting from it. 3. Positioning itself as a national asset in the facilitation of lifelong learning. And 4. Developing its information and communication technology infrastructure as the driving force for the education of more people, more rapidly, and the improvement of efficiency and academic quality in order to advance community and national development. Three key personalities were eventually appointed by government to begin the process of establishing the University for Development Studies. They were Professor Raymond Bagro Benning as Foundation Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Paul Efa, who was then Mr. Paul Efa, as Foundation Registrar, and the late Mr. Aganabanga as Foundation Finance Officer. Professor Benning and Dr. Paul Efa share some experiences. Now, the students were at Yampala and the uh, staff, lecturers, VC at Tamale. The road at Priyankala was very bad at that time. There was no water, adequate water at Priyankala. Um, going um, to Tamale, the three of us, and looking around to have um, um, where we'll stay, planning, um, everything. And I recall uh, going to the residency being given uh, places to stay and uh, three of us sitting under um, a tree to, to strategize and to plan how we establish the, the university today the university for development studies stands tall among its predecessors and can boast of some modest achievements professor kaku sagari noko former acting vice chancellor witnessed some growth in the university's student numbers. Uh, we had problems with uh, student intake. Uh, we had to popularize the programs at the University for Development Studies. We increased the number of programs. We had a lot of staff sent on uh, study leaves to acquire higher qualifications. And we were able to raise the student population from 3,000 or so when I joined to almost 19,000 when I was living. And again, too, we also had the increase, substantial increase in the number of programs, from the initial programs of five to almost 20 programs at the time I was living. Unlike other government universities that started under the tutelage of our colonial masters and later gradually transferred to Ghanaians, the University for Development Studies can boast that it is the premier government university that started not as a university college, but a full-fledged university without any affiliation with any university. It is, however, important to mention that Ghana's older universities, namely the University of Ghana, the University of Cape Coast, and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, were very supportive to this young institution and contributed in diverse ways to ensure its success. Today, UDS has carved a niche for itself with its unique pedagogic training that emphasizes on intensive community-based field practical training, commonly referred to as the Third Trimester Field Practical Programs, or TTFPP for short. Universities in Ghana, you hear semester, semester, which is two, system, two terms in the year. But we have three terms. So the first trimester is for classroom theory work, second trimester, classroom theory work. Then the third trimester, which is made up of eight weeks, is for full practical training. This unique training structure has proven itself as one that meets the developmental needs of the country. Well, if during your, your training, you spend three to two to three years in the community, a rural community, and after graduating, they are posting you to a new district capital, you have no problem of going there, so they go and perform. In the 2000 population census, 70% of Ghana's poor remain in the villages 
and a huge chunk can be found in the three regions of northern Ghana. The TTFPP thus prepares students for the real world out there to face the challenges confronting the country. My community during the TTFPP program was Jinjinabani, located in the Bimbila district of the northern region. Being a part of a group of students from the various campuses of this university, I had a chance to interact, learn from colleagues, not only colleagues, but also the community as well. For the first time, I was exposed to various farming techniques that I knew nothing of, that I had only read in the books. But for the first time, I was able to learn how to weed, how to sow, and again to learn about the various post-harvest practices. A community called Kaingwasi is just a small community made of the Tindanes and the Musagayus. I believed, from according to them, they were like, we have the, the landowners and those parts who will take after the kinship. And apart from that, what they do, their taboos, their values, their vegetation, their lifestyle, their just way of living, I got to learn everything. I'm studying French on campus and luckily enough, God chose me to be among the best students who were selected to do our industrial attachment, not in Ghana, but outside Ghana. We did it at Burkina Faso. And this uh, program is sponsored by the French Embassy in Ghana. So as I speak to you now, we really enjoyed this program. And I was happy that I had the opportunity to be a student of UDS, and for that matter, Navurongo Campus. 20 years down the line, UDS can boast of eight faculties, four centers, and two schools spread across four campuses. These campuses are the Nyangpala campus, the Tamale campus, the Navrongo campus, and the Wa campus. The late vice chancellor of UDS, Professor J.B.K. Kaburise, was very instrumental in putting up the various structures on the various campuses, notable among which is the central administration block of the university. Nyangpala. This is where it all began in 1993. The UDS campus in Nyangpala is the first fully owned campus of the UDS. Nyangpala is a town in the Tolongkumbungu district, about 20 kilometers southwest of Tamale. The Nyangpala campus of the University for Development Studies has three faculties, Faculty of Agriculture, the Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources, and the most current, the Faculty of Agribusiness and Communication Sciences. Current Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Gabriel A. Te used to head the Faculty of Agriculture and also was the Dean in charge of the Nyangpala campus. Professor George Nyako is the Dean for the Faculty of Agri. It started with 40 students uh, who were admitted to do pursue a program in BSc Agricultural Technology. And now we have almost 2,000 students on this campus. Professor Haruna Yakubu is the Vice Chancellor. Our intention is also to start a program in agricultural engineering, which will in the near future metamorphose into a faculty of engineering at the Nyangpala campus. Tamale. Tamale is the capital of the northern region of Ghana. According to the 2010 Housing and Population Census, Tamale has a projected population of 537,986, making it the fastest growing city in West Africa. Tamale is the principal center of education in the entire northern Ghana. The main administration of the University for Development Studies is in Tamale. Dr. A.B.T. Zakaria is the registrar for UDS. In UDS, our programs are all geared towards uh, um, rural and community development. Our projects are geared towards um, imbibing our students the interest, the spirit, you know, to live and work in the rural communities. We have uh, we train very quality students. This has been acclaimed by several um, employers, local and international organizations, who happen to those who are who have employed our students will tell you that our students are of quality. We really give them very good academic and practical training. The School of Medicine and Health Sciences, UDS-SMHS, started in 1995 
with students admitted to do a four-year BSc program in community nutrition. In 1996, the university started its training of medical doctors under the School of Medicine and Health Sciences. Professor Hatton Adi was recruited to start the School of Medicine and Health Sciences. Initially, students were sent to the University of Ghana Medical School and that of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology for the clinical training. It was not until 2005 that the UDS SMHS started its own training at the Tamale Teaching Hospital. Dr. Edward N. Jader, then Dean of School of Medicine and Health Sciences. The mandate of the school is to turn out graduates who will be so much in a position to help the community in which we find ourselves, that is our catchment area, the three northern regions, including Brown Harfo, both doctors and graduates from the other departments were to find themselves quite useful to the society in which uh, we operate. In fact, we are to account ourselves medically and health-wise to the community, and that's what we have been doing. UDS SMHS has since secured for itself an enviable position of being the first innovative medical training institution in the entire country with its problem-based learning methodology. It has stayed true to its mandate of keeping in touch and being useful to the communities in which it operates. UDS is the first university in the entire West Africa to start the problem-based learning methodology. Dr. Samuel Bugri is currently acting dean of UDS SMHS. He talks about COBIS, one of UDS SMHS's flagship programs that make its graduates enviable among medical training institutions in the entire country. This issue of posting people to the north and they don't turn up is being addressed by our initiating this COBIS, which prepares them and makes them understand that their services are needed somewhere. It's not just a question of practicing medicine. Yes, you can sit, sit in Kolibu or in Rich Hospital and practice medicine, but where is your service most needed? So if, if you are a doctor by heart, from your heart, then you want to provide the services where it is most needed and is most appreciated. And so if, you, if we have done that with our students and we're hoping that it will be um, a, a, a key to reducing the doctor population ratio that we'll be having in, in that moment. Daniel Amankwa is a student of the UDS SMHS. He shares his experiences. As compared to the other medical schools, UDS Medical School has a lot to offer. They train people to uh, be hands-on. There's a lot of exposure when it comes to uh, UDS Medical School and that's what makes a good doctor. And I believe if you come to UDS, and when you come to UDS, you wouldn't regret it at all. The experiences are invaluable. They are huge and enormous and I believe students who have a calling in medicine would really appreciate what UDS has to offer. Dr. Jader puts it succinctly as he describes the effect of the training on the students, so much so that they want to return to their communities of attachment to give service. When we send students out to the district uh, hospitals, the funny thing is that the moment they graduate, they all want to run back there. Especially, I know we send some students to Bole, Bole Hospital. Immediately they graduated, they all ran back to Bole to give services. So and that is the sort of thing we really want to see. And I'm happy that this sort of thing is going on. There were some who returned to Boko Hospital and they were working there because we had sent them there. So I think that it's a very good thing and the students themselves have realized that they owe something to the community in which they are studying. If within its first 15 years, the UDS SMHS has come this far, one can only imagine what the next 20 years would look like. Now, our School for Medicine and Health Sciences is seen as one faculty. Our intention is to make sure that in the foreseeable future, we are able to graduate it into a College of Health Sciences. 
under which we're going to have a number of schools and a faculty. We intend having a school of pharmacology, we intend having a medical school, we intend having a school of nursing, a faculty of allied health sciences, and indeed we can also have a school dedicated to midwifery. These are the things that we are working on and hopefully gradually we should be able to convert our medical school into a college of health sciences. It is important to recognize the partnership between UDS and the community within which it operates. According to Dr. Jader, Dr. Andani Andan, chief of Sagnerigu, gave out the land on which the UDS SMHS and the central administration block is housed. Professor Benning remembers the moment when Dr. Andan agreed to give out this large parcel of land to UDS. I want land at Tamale for a medical school. UDS incorporates a medical school. And you know, he was the first Northerner to be trained as a doctor in Britain. And I happened to come across correspondence. I even mentioned him in the book on history of education in Northern Ghana. So he sat back and said, ah, how I struggled in London to get a, a, a degree in medicine. Now it's Tamale. You just go here. Take as much land as uh, perhaps I didn't take it up. <laughs> At that time, perhaps I was very modest, you know, and all that. And that was it. And he told me, the land does not belong to me personally but it belongs to my people. And I will tell them that I have given this to you. And this is where the medical school and the central administration is. And that was, in fact, uh, you know, I'm so grateful to him for that gesture. And I think the, uni the university will have to name something prominent after him. Navrongo. Navrongo is the capital of the Kasina Nankana district in the Upper East region of Ghana. According to the 2010 population census, it has 27,306 inhabitants. It is an important market town and serves as a major border town between Ghana and Burkina Faso. Navrongo became a center for the establishment of the Faculty of Applied Sciences and the Faculty of Mathematical Sciences of the University for Development Studies, UDS. Through the Navrongo campus, UDS is the only university in Ghana with a Faculty of Mathematical Sciences. This faculty gives comprehensive training in statistics and thus produces a good number of PhD graduates in statistics in Ghana. Dr. Albert Lugutera, now the Dean of the Faculty of Mathematical Sciences, was the head of department for statistics. In these years we have grown and now we do not only offer undergraduate programs, but we also offer postgraduate programs. Uh, the statistics department is one of the departments that has grown uh, very much significantly over these 20 years. Now we have uh, in the statistics department, we run programs from undergraduate all the way to the PhD level. And we run practical oriented courses. And so that has made the statistics programs in the UDS very attractive to both industry and research institutions. Our intention is to establish an energy center at the Navrongo campus in the, not near, the near future. At this point, we are collaborating with some professors in energy in, um, in India who come here once in a year. So far, they have been here twice, and our intention is to establish this center in Navrongo. We are also collaborating with a university in the United States of America in Nevada. Also, they already have an energy center established and we are trying to replicate what they are doing there, of course, using what we have locally on the ground here. Students of UDS who find themselves in Navrongo are the proudest of students. A student from the Bumpurgo Union District enrolled for a BA program he proved his worth and the university sponsored him to do his master's after which he was employed as a lecturer. He shares his story. I was retained as a senior research assistant in the UDS. Then some six months into my employment, 
the university sponsored me to go for my master's degree here in this same UDS. Then, on successful completion of the master's degree program, I was appointed as lecturer into the statistics department of the Faculty of Mathematical Sciences. Wa. Wa is the capital town of Ghana's youngest region, Upper West. Wa arguably hosts the campus where the majority of students of the UDS are based. Dr. Sylvester Gala is the Dean of the Faculty of Integrated Development Studies. The, the course is quite challenging. So um, many students who come here uh, to participate in the integrated program uh, have to uh, be hard working, you know, because uh, um, you come and take uh, uh, courses in many disciplinary areas and sometimes some of these courses uh, may be new to uh, you uh, because uh, you, from the course uh, description you see that uh, you take courses from history uh, through geography, economics, to planning. The WA campus was actually born at the School of Hygiene in Tamale in 1995. The Faculty of Integrated Development Studies started in 1994. It moved to Navrongo in 1996 and finally to its own home in WA in 2002. Professor Francis Duno Bacho was the Dean of the Faculty of Planning and Land Management and doubled as the dean in charge of the WA campus. Since uh, uh, 2008, we have made conscious efforts to identify critical areas where we would like to uh, develop our, our staff up to PAD level. And so far, we have been able to uh, identify uh, these courses, uh, these areas, and we have sent out 12 uh, members of staff to pursue their PADs and we will continue at least every year we want the staff to go and the idea is that as those who are going they are coming back and then of course you send more people then they, they come back. UDS has made WA a busy town. Various businesses have sprung up especially in the area of transport, hotels and hostel accommodation facilities among others. But more importantly, the, the development on both WA and Navrongo campus is something that we are proud of. Uh, we were able to raise the one faculty uh, WA campus to a campus with three faculties. Uh, we were able to raise the numbers from 2,000 to almost 10,000. The cordial relationship among the administrative staff, lecturers, laborers and students is evident across all campuses as the vice chancellor and his team pays each campus a working visit normally at the beginning of every year definitely it's just proper that we meet to reflect on last year's activities and to make an attempt to plan for the future and as we plan definitely there could be certain things that some of you will be aware of and you want to use by pointing them out to guide us in our plans for the future. That is why I decided to go around the campuses, starting as I've always done from work, because uh, in terms of staff numbers, you quite outnumber almost all those on the other campuses. Pertinent issues are discussed mutually. Respective officials are on hand to answer pertinent questions ranging from academic, infrastructural development, labor, ICT, promotions, etc. I think that it has been a pleasure speaking to the Vice of the University and uh, I think that has been our very first time of meeting the Vice Chancellor ever since we stepped foot into the university. And it hasn't been that easy, or it's not always easy to even say that we're meeting a vice chancellor of the university to speak to. I think we are very happy for this day. We've been able to express our feelings, and he has also told us how hard he's working so that we will all achieve at the end of the day. To make UDS globally competitive, UDS International was established with the responsibility of strengthening and widening international linkages and collaborations with other institutions throughout the world. Professor Gordana Kranyak is the director of UDS International. We have various relationships with different universities which were done by either faculties individually 
or sometimes even departments. And uh, this new office is now taking care of all these various agreements. We produce international memoranda of understanding with different organizations in different continents. And we also try to find scholarships, especially PhD and masters for candidates from UDS. We are discussing with various uh, universities joint programs, double degree programs, training options where foreign U U university students are coming here for period. Our students are going to other universities and the general quality of education is improving. Between 2002 and 2012, the university has signed various memoranda of understanding with over 20 international institutions, 20th anniversary celebrations. The UDS launched a year-long 20th anniversary celebration under the theme UDS, 20 years of community development through higher education. Various financial institutions including the Ghana Commercial Bank, the National Investment Bank and Stanbic Bank contributed substantially towards the celebration to mark the milestone. Other activities to mark this important anniversary included faculty exhibitions, talks, debates, floats, quiz competitions, open days, games, public lectures, exhibitions, seminars and a Meet the Press event. Professor David Miller, the then Pro Vice Chancellor, chaired the local organizing committee for the 20th anniversary celebrations. The VC has empowered us sufficiently to perform. And I must say, the alumni have taken center stage. After all, they are the ones who are 20. So it is the alumni who are leading the organization of this function, and we are just facilitating. The Africa Leadership Lectures was part of the 20th anniversary celebrations. The celebration of the university's 20th anniversary should be a source of pride and satisfaction for all who, at one time or the other, provided service to the university. As a university devoted to development research, UDS seeks to stimulate discussion and action on African leadership and governance by providing a platform for debate on these issues. The university has therefore instituted an African Leadership Lecture Series. The idea is to invite eminent African leaders, past and present, to share experiences and generate ideas for the continent's development. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate aim of this lecture series is to finally establish an African Leadership Center which, as it expected, will culminate into an African Leadership Institute. When you talk of the Africa Leadership Lecture Series, this is one activity of the university that has actually opened us up to the international community. The maiden edition of the Africa Leadership Lecture Series ended with the inaugural speaker, former President of Nigeria, General Olusegun Obasanjo, being awarded an honorary doctorate degree. He graduated alongside the second batch of medical students fully trained by UDS SMHS. I also want to thank the chairman and the vice chancellor for instituting this lecture series. And um, as I have said, not only must we sustain it, we must carry it to the next level. President John Dramani Mahama graced the occasion and used the opportunity to give testimony of the much talked about TTFPP and the new breed of quality graduates of UDS. I remember in my service as a member of parliament that on many occasions when I visited some of the remotest parts of my constituencies, I have been pleasantly surprised to find students of the University of Development Studies in their third trimester, not only living, but eating and sleeping. <laughs> eating and sleeping with the people of the community, learning their challenges and coming up 
with solutions to the problems that they have found in these communities. I urge the UDS to continue with this approach because it is a university that is based in the savannah and as we are aware, the savannah areas of this country are the poorest parts of our country. Since the Maiden Africa Leadership Lectures event, UDS has honored other former African leaders like His Excellency Festus Muhai of Botswana. Other activities included the conferment of another honorary doctorate degree on former President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Jerry John Rawlings, for his untiring efforts towards the establishment of the university. to be the latest alumni of UDS. <laughs> Proud to be honored by you and honored to join your peer group. Anyone who has passed through the doors of UDS becomes an ambassador for the university. I am also ready to intensify my role as an ambassador for UDS as I have been promoter from the very beginning. A bust was also unveiled in his honor. The Asante Hini sent a special representative to grace the occasion and to make a cash donation to the university. In the next 20 years, UDS's impact in every aspect of society would be visible for all to see. There are various arguments about the future of this great institution. Some are of the view that it should be split into three autonomous regional-based universities, while other proponents believe it should be maintained as it is. I would like to see the UDS maintained as it is. All our campuses are interwoven in such a way that the no single one can exist independently of the other and we see UDS developing gradually and growing into a university that will span across all the northern regions of Ghana and possibly have campuses in the southern parts of the country as well. These are sound and compelling arguments, but there is time to listen to a few more. Any attempt to split the university, 20, 10 years or 20 years down the line, into autonomous universities in region or regional based universities that have been hinted, we've had hints of that, will most likely defeat the purpose for which the institution was set up. So I want to see 20 years down the line, UDS remains UDS with campuses as constituted in the act and also in the statute, but not preventing other universities from being in place. But I want to see UDS setting the mark, advancing the course of integration of academia with the community, and also ensuring that the university students leave the university with a unique identity or being of service to the community. If universities can be established for the other campuses, other regions, I have no objection. But UDS has made a name for itself as the, about the first developmental university in Africa. I see that UDS has a bright future. I am certain that the University of De for Development Studies will also be counted as one of the institutions which have been true to the commitment of a people-centered development agency. In fact, UDS has really united this country more than you know, anybody expected. It has ambassadors in the form of their students who will go out to show to the world what they are made of. That is one way they can demonstrate to the whole world their uniqueness. Today, the university that started without a single building to its credit has fast developed. The flame that was lit 20 years ago is still burning and there is no sign whatsoever of it going off. The UDS from its establishment 
and the vision that its founder gave it was not to be an ivory tower, not to be a light surrounded by total darkness. The UDS was supposed to be a university integrated into the community in which it had been established. It was meant to spawn ideas and research to improve the lives of the people in the savannah. And I must say that the UDS in this regard can be described as a light that has not only permeated the darkness around it, but has worked to dispel the darkness in the community in which it was established.